So the ones above were all simplifying. This one's going to be solving. How do you know it's solving? Because it's an equal sign. Some of you go, hey, when do I put equals? When do I not? Or, you know, like when you have problems like this, then you know your answer will look like this. But if this wasn't there, your answer would be here. And you would factor it, because that's exactly what I did, and you would stop. But once it says equals 0, then it is x equals 3 and x equals 2. Equal in the question, equal in the answer. No equal in the question, no equal in the answer. Okay, so I actually want to start with number 29 first. And what I like about number 29, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, is that I notice that my bases, mm, you know what, I'm actually going to erase the K because I don't like that one. Let's just pretend the K is not even there. Okay, um, actually I lied. Let's keep the K and let's add a plus 7. That's really, really small, okay? So the goal is I want these big numbers. They're called bases. I want them to be exactly the same. So we need to have the bases need to be the same. When the bases are the same, then it's so much easier. Because then all I have to do is take the little and set it equal to each other. Okay? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. 3k equals 2k plus 7. Subtract 2k. k equals 7. So when my bases are the same... Set them equal to each other. Sorry, my daughter's laughing in the background. She's watching YouTube and is very excited. Okay, so let me say it one more time. When the bases are the same, I'm a happy girl. Set the exponents equal to each other. Now, some of you go, but I don't understand. Why are you doing that? What if I had 3 to the x equals 3 squared? What do you think x equals? And you go, well, it's 2. Yeah, because if x was 2, then both sides would be the same. So how do I know that? Once the bases are the same, I said this equal to this, and then it's done. So what happens in number 29 when the bases are not the same? Well, what do I do? I need to make them the same. So I really look at the 4 and the 64, and I think, hmm, how could I change that? Well, I do know that 64 is the same thing as 4 cubed. And you go, but how do you know that? I don't know. How do you know that 3 times 4 equals 12? The more you practice it, the more it just clicks. Okay. Now let's say you go, but I don't know. I don't know that. So let's try. I get into my calculator. And let me see. I go calculator. And I go 4 yeah, times 4 times 4. Oh, I did that three times. That's 4 cubed. Okay. And you would probably use decimals because that's better to use. So now that I see that my bases are the same, what can I do? Take this and set it equal to this. So I'm going to go negative 2n minus 2 equals 3. And that's what I'm going to make to show this little equal sign. I know I didn't leave much space, but it's fine. Add 2 to both sides. Divide. Don't leave it a decimal. It's good that you know that negative 5 halves is negative 2 and a half, but this is a lot more pretty in terms of an answer. Now, if you got an answer like 10 fourths, that is not pretty because you can divide by 2. So yes, I would not give you full credit if you gave me that answer. Make sure it's simplified. Okay? All right, let's look at this one. And you go, okay, well, if I did the 25 and I turned my little phone on here, and I tried doing the same game you did last time, and I go clear, 25 times 25, it's 625. It passes 125, it didn't work. Well, what that means is not only do I have to change this number, but I also have to change this number. If they end in a 5, I usually think it's divisible by 5. So that means this is really the same thing as 5 squared times, notice my parentheses here, v plus 2. And 125 is 5 cubed times negative v. So I'm going to put that in parentheses, put that there in blue so that you don't forget it. Then I would distribute, 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 and set them equal to each other. So now that I did that, I set them equal to each other because my bases were the same. 
and then I move this over and I get 4 equals negative 5v, v equals negative 4 fifths. Let me remind you, I'm going kind of quickly. If I made a mistake, you're probably right. I made a mistake. Just text me, okay? 16 and 64. I'm going to have to change both of them. Think about what it could be. Um, now, some of you might say 2 to the 4th and 2 to the 6th. That works. I like the bigger numbers because then that means the answer is smaller. So I would say this is 4 squared times 2 minus 3a, and this is 4 cubed. So I want to remember to distribute. Now that I did that, I can distribute, distribute. My bases are the same. Set them equal to each other. 4 minus 6a equals 3. Is it always going to be a fraction? Usually it's not. It's just the program that I picked this from a lot of them are fractions, but you'll be okay. Um, subtract 4. If you go, Miss Rifkin, I'd appreciate you showing minus 4 minus 4. Let me know that, um, and that means I need to help you a little bit with solving for x, but I'm not showing every step. I don't need you to show me every step, okay? You learned how to do this three years ago. Does it mean it's bad if you forgot? Well, I mean, it's not great, but just relearn it. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you forgot, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. I like this one. My bases are the same. So I take this, and I set it equal to this, and you go, well, 3p can't equal 2p. Well, let's find out. I could actually, let me put this really quick. I could subtract the 2p, and then I'm left with p equals, well, what would I be left with? Zero. So I guess I can get an answer. Okay. When I wouldn't get an answer is if I had something like this. 6x plus 2 equals 6x minus 7. If I subtract 6x to both sides, I'm left with 2 equals negative 7. That is no solution because I don't even have a letter to solve for anymore. If this was minus 7, and that would be that's negative 7, it's not no solution. Negative 7 has always been equal to negative 7 in every world, no matter what day of the week is, no matter what time of year it is. So that would be infinite solutions. Okay, just a reminder. All right, last one. If it ends in a 5, I think you know. Okay, bases are the same. Distribute, distribute. This should almost be a waste of your time now. Subtract 4. Common mistake you're going to make is tell me it's negative 4. It is not negative 4. It is negative 1 fourth because it's negative 2 divided by 8 divided by 2 divided by 2. Okay, before I end this video, I see one that's a little crazy. So how could I make a fraction equal a whole number? All right, let me remind you about things that I probably reminded you about before. So if I have 3 cubed, it's 27. You can't see that. If I have 3 squared, it's 9. If I have 3 to the first, it's 3. Anybody noticing a pattern here? So at 3, 2, 1, 0, what am I doing every single time? Ah, dividing by 3. Dividing by 3. So what should I do to get 3 to the 0? Divide by 3. Life's all about patterns. And if you remember your teacher, could be me or somebody else, said anything to the 0 power is always 1, and you go, what? I don't understand how come. Well, it's because life is all about a pattern, which means this should be 3 to the negative 1. Well, shoot, what is that going to be? Well, if you take 1 and you divide it by 3, that's 1 third. That's why 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. If I have 3 to the negative 2, if you take 1 third and you divide that by 3, what is 1 third divided by 3? That's the same thing as 1 third times 1 third, which is 1 ninth. And some of you go, am I going to have to write this down every time? No. What you're going to remember is that any time you have a negative exponent, you move it to the bottom. When I have a kid that's disrupting themselves or somebody else, I just move them. Once I move them, everything's great. And now it's on the bottom, and that's 1 over 9. So what if I had this? 1 over 3 to the negative 2. Am I happy there? No. So if it's on the bottom, this time I move it to the top. And once I move it to the top, do I even need a bottom anymore? No. So 3 squared is 9. So what does that mean for this problem here? Let's focus over here. See, I have a 4 here and a 64. 
So I know this is going to be 4 cubed to the r. The right side isn't my issue, it's the left side. I know that 1 fourth is the same thing as 1 over 4 to the 1. But this, the 4 is on the bottom, and here the 4 is on the top. So if I move this upstairs, I can almost go backwards, and that could be 4 to the negative 1. So I can go backwards. So a kid could not do what they're supposed to do and not be awesome for themselves or others. Okay, so it's actually 4 to the negative 1 times 3r minus 2. And then dot, 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 you finish it from there. Okay, I think that's it. And, oh, sorry, let me point out, da, da, da. this is your homework, okay? And if you're stuck on this, I definitely encourage you to go to Google and look for some answers, or you can text me.